Good morning. My name is Brian Shepard, and I just want to take a minute and introduce you guys to the concept of rate of change. So sit back and enjoy this video. Rate of change. This topic deepens student understanding of the central ideas of rate of change. Students discover that they can model data sets that have a constant rate of change with a linear function. Students also learn that not all data are linear and thus require other models. Let's look at the definition of rate of change. Rate of change tells us, on average, how a quantity changes over time. When we put this information on a graph, the rate of change is represented by the slope of a line. Let's check out a few examples of rates of change that you are more familiar with. Miles per hour. The number of miles that you drive in one hour, or miles per hour, is a rate of change. Have you ever known someone that wants to lose weight? No, this is not the time to make fun of your classmates. Losing a certain number of pounds per week is the goal of many people and represents a rate at which your weight is changing. If you have ever played fantasy baseball or football, a player's statistics are very important. If Kobe Bryant scores, on average, 30 points per game, you might want him on your team. Are you a tall person? Even if you aren't, between the ages of 0 and 21, you will grow a certain number of inches per year. Your change in height represents another rate of change. With companies like Direct TV and the Dish Network, which offer way more channels than I actually like to watch, I find myself channel surfing all the time. The number of channels I flip through every minute I sit in front of the TV is another rate of change. How about tree growth? Just as you grow, plants and trees grow at a certain rate also. Many trees, when you buy them at the nursery, will have a tag on them, which tells you exactly how fast the tree will grow each year. Everyone likes money. If you were saving money to buy some wheels to go cruising in, wouldn't you like to know how long it would take you to save up the money you need for the car? By knowing the rate at which your savings is changing, you can quickly calculate how long it will take you to save up your money to buy that car. Airplanes. Did you know that airplanes are required to take off from the airport at a certain number of feet in height per minute? They do this so that the planes don't hit other planes and trees close to the airport. I'm glad that pilots know about rate of change. How about you? Perhaps you have this great idea in your head and you want to start your own business one day. It will be extremely important for you to know how long your company will stay in business if you are losing a certain number of dollars each month. If your bank account is shrinking, you will eventually run out of money and knowing when this happens could be very important. These examples were only a few representative examples of what we're going to see in everyday life. And by having an, a better understanding of these examples, it will help us to solve problems in our own life. Now, I don't know about you, but I have a whole lot better understanding of the situation by using a graph. When we put information on a graph, we're making a visual representation of the situation that we're looking at. Have you ever heard the saying, a picture paints a thousand words? Well, that's what a graph does. It helps us to better analyze what's going on. Now, I'd like to take a second and do a little experiment. And I'm going to call this one Grandma's House. My house is in Waxahachie, Texas. My grandma lives in Clearwater, Florida, and I am planning a trip to go see her, and I want to know how long it's going to take me to get there. Now, if I go online and do a Google map to my grandma's house, it will tell me that it is 1184 miles to her house, and it will take me 17 hours and 41 minutes. I know what you might be thinking now. Google, Google Maps already told me how long it's going to take, so why are we doing this? Well, Google Maps assumes that you are traveling at a constant rate of speed, like 65 miles per hour. I didn't tell you earlier, but we are pulling a trail behind the car with lots of fragile stuff for Grandma, and we can only drive about 50 miles an hour. Therefore, we cannot use Google Maps' time of travel. We can calculate the time it takes to travel to Grandma's house. That will help us determine if I can do the trip in one day or if we need more than one day. This will impact my budget because I could possibly need to get a hotel room, buy more meals, and so on. Let's take another quick look at our definition of rate of change. Rate of change tells us, on average, how a quantity changes over time. 
When we put this information on a graph, the rate of change is represented by the slope of a line. Let's take a look at how a graph can help us answer the question of how long our journey will take. We said that we are traveling at 50 miles an hour. That means that every hour I travel, I go 50 miles. Because I am comparing distance and time, those are the two quantities I can label my graph with. Time is almost always our independent value, and so I will label the x-axis with time and our y-axis with distance. Remember, if I am traveling 50 miles per hour, that means I travel 50 miles in one hour. I will also travel 50 more miles every hour after that. When I plot these data points on my graph, I put a dot at 1, 50. If I have gone 50 miles in one hour, I will now have gone 100 miles in two hours, 150 miles in three hours, and so on. Because I don't know how long it will take me to drive, I'll go ahead and put lots of dots on the graph. Now remember, Google Maps told us that the total distance from my house to Grandma's house is 1184 miles. All that needs to happen now is that we can look at our graph and see which dot is found at a distance of 1184. When we look at the graph, we see that the total time it should take us to get to Grandma's house, traveling at 50 miles an hour, will be just under 24 hours. Do you think you've got it? Let's do a quick example to follow up. Instead of driving to Grandma's, we're going to take an airplane. Airplanes have an added benefit over driving in that they can go much faster and they can go in a straight line. Let's say that our plane will travel 400 miles per hour. That's 400 miles in one hour. In two hours, it can go 800 miles, and in three hours, 1,200 miles. Let's plot this. Just like before, as we plot the rate of change coordinates, we see that there is a linear relationship and that it would be very easy to pull values of time off of the graph for every value of distance. Looking at our original map, the approximate distance to Grandma's house is going to be 1,000 miles. When we take this value of 1,000 miles back to the plot we made, we found very easily the estimated time it would take us to fly to Grandma's house is 2 hours and 45 minutes. Once we understand rate of change and how easy it is to graph, we can very easily apply it to everyday life. Remember our example about Grandma's house? And it was going to take us just under 24 hours to drive there. Well, you know, that affects a lot of things. If I have to get a hotel room, extra meals, that's going to hit my pocketbook. And that's something I definitely can't afford right now. So what I've decided to do is just wait a couple months to go see Grandma. Uh, thank you for taking the time to watch this video. I hope that it helped you understand at least a little bit what rate of change is and how we can apply it to everyday life.